Yes, I mean, this is the sort of ongoing saga of uh, mortgages and uh, the rates that they're going to go up. And I thought it was quite interesting that the guest you just had on was sort of saying, let's all not panic so much. And, mm. of course, in the mirror, we have panic. Uh, house prices to slump by 8%, mortgages set to a 20-year high. I mean, I think that we do need to perhaps have a little bit of perspective. I There's always... So people moan when the house prices keep going up. Yeah. So yeah. sl an 8% slump would be good for first-time buyers. How much of, of all of this is the media's fault, is actually overplaying it? So say, just looking at Benjamin, then. <laughs> well, yeah, sorry. But if, but if you look at the front pages, as I, as I said earlier, you would be convinced that there will, there will be winter blackouts this this winter. And yet that's not what anyone actually is saying in the smaller print. I mean, I think the fact that it's a prospect and it was said by the national grid justifies the concern and, and the coverage. But on, on the point of house prices, you know, you heard during the COVID period, which was obviously very unpredictable, at the start of, of the lockdowns and the serious point of COVID, uh, house prices did fall a bit. There were some uh, not quite bargains, but some good deals to be had. But actually, they continue to rise pretty consistently. And so, you know, I, I, as, a, as someone who would like to buy a house who's mm. not yet a homeowner and lives in, in a very expensive part of the country, London, uh, you know, I'd be quite glad of, a, of an 8 to 10% fall. And the market's completely out of control. The idea that, you know, in, in the 70s, it was four times the average income to buy a house, and now it's mm. 20 times in parts of the country is utterly ludicrous. Yeah, and I think of course it is. Think about the cost is, of a house yeah. in London. Yeah. But I think it's also part of the problem that we've all got used to having uh, an availability of mortgage offers mm. and also cheap money. Let's cheap all money. be honest, the interest rate has been so artificially low for some time that we've all got very used to that fact. And lenders just allowing you to spend much more than you can realistically afford on a property. I thought we'd learned this lesson after the last crash. And you'd think so. And I think we learned it for a very short period of time. And now we're coming back round mm. to that again. And interest rates are going up to perhaps what they should be and what would normally be a normal sort of interest rate. And I think that we've all got so used to it being quick, available and cheap that we've lost sight of the fact that this is, you know, this is a big purchase. And I think the law of supply and demand will state that house prices are not going to fall by as much as everybody thinks. No, there, they, will, there may be some change. They never do very much. They do don't. They? I think there's a small variation. But, I mean, what's more concerning is we're not building enough houses. And people who want to get on the property ladder are just not going to have that because of the available stock and the availability of mortgages. Oh. So I think we, we're just... We're talking ourselves into a little bit of a frenzy, I think. And yes, it's right to be wary of these kind of costs and the impact that it has on people, but I think that we ought to fall much shorter of saying this is woeful, this is awful, look, you know, using the word slump and yeah. things like that. I think we all have to be a little bit careful. The, the semantics of it are really, really important. We don't want to frighten people, as you say, Anne, with all of the front pages saying we Doom, will Doom, gloom return. and disaster. But